Hi, I'm Mickey Mankus and welcome to Out the Back Door. Today I want to talk to you about how to properly use Tatler reusable lids and how they compare into using the metal lids that most people do and can't find right now. I'm also going to be talking about stainless steel bands, so join me. As any of you know that can, right now in this season, 2020 of fall, we are having an extremely hard time finding canning jars. If we can find canning jars, we're doing well, but we can't find any canning lids. There's like a major shortage on them and they're not producing them. What I want to talk about is the Tatler canning lid that many people are turning to. I've recently placed an order with Tatler, which I have in the past a few different times, and I've been waiting almost six weeks for my second order of Tatler reusable lids. So many people are going to this choice because they can't get the metal lids right now and they do want to be canning. The Tatler reusable lids are made of a BPA free plastic. They come in two pieces. You get a rubber gasket along with the plastic lid and they fit together. This will simulate the same thing as our standard metal lid except that we have two pieces here where the gasket material is painted onto the metal lids. Tatler is um, a USA company. They're in the States here and right now their business is exploding. It is so busy and I say good for them. But a lot of us are waiting on our orders for our lids. Recently I did receive an email from them saying they are expanding their production line in order to try to keep up with the demand of wanting Tatler reusable lids. I've been using these for several years. Um, there is a small learning curve to using them, so I say please do not be discouraged if you have jars that fail, um, that do not properly seal, because it may take you a little bit to get used to them. If you read the directions on the metal lids on the packaging, it says that you no longer have to boil these or heat them up in hot water. You can just place them on top of your jar and then apply your canning band. Put it in your canner and you process as normal. Now, I don't know if it's because the gasket material is so much thinner than it used to be or what the reasoning is for. I have used a few of these like these on my jams and jellies and they have sealed, but I've only canned them this season. So I don't know how far down the line that they are going to last and if they're going to fail or not. A couple of years ago, I went and I did many, many cases of potatoes and I did use the metal lids on them because I had bought new cases of jars. So it was just convenient. I used those, but I've had six jars fail on me within that time. They have a label inside on the top of the um, cases now that say guaranteed seal for like 18 months. What's 18 months? What happened to years? There's a new company um, that started, I believe, in the early 90s. I think they're called Newell. They own Kerr, Ball, Golden Harvest, and Bernadine canning jars. So when you're buying any of those, they're all being manufactured by that same company, just in different factories. And in my opinion, the quality of the jar has gone down and the lids have gotten extremely thin and the gasket is really thin. And we're just not getting a good seal that's going to last for years like it should or it did at one time. I switched to Tatler several years ago just for the fact that I do some prepping and I'm thinking, what happens if the time comes where we can't get metal lids? Little did I realize I was right. We're running out right now and we can't get them. And that was several years ago. So I did purchase the Tatler lids. As I mentioned, um, the metal ones you no longer have to heat up. These you do. You do want to put these in scalding water. This is going to warm up, 
your gasket material and get it flexible, you're going to put them together. When you put your product into your jar that you're going to can and you clean your rim as you always would, you're going to set this on top. Once you have it on top, you're going to put your band on. The easiest way I try to explain to people is the band is just holding your lid down. That's the only purpose for it. So you don't need to crank it down tight. You need the oxygen to be able to come out of the jar while it's processing. So the way that I show people how to put a Tatler lid on is you're gonna put your band on, you're gonna put your finger in the center, Gently screw it down. Can you see it turning on the table? Okay, I can't tighten it down, but it's turning on the table. It's tight enough. That's all you need. And then you're going to put it into your canner to process. The next difference between the two of them is when you take them out of the canner, generally all you do is you lift your jar up. You're going to set it on um, a towel or something. And and you're gonna wait for the ping sound. You're gonna wait for it to pop. Right now, uh, the little button in the center here is raised up, and when the vacuum happens in there, it'll pop down and stay down. That means that it's sealed. Tatler lids don't ping. Now, with the Tatler lids, the only way you're gonna be able to know if it's sealed or not is by lifting it from the jar. If it is not sealed properly, I promise you, it's gonna come off that easy. One of the ways, okay, here's, all right. That is sealed, because it had it not, it would have pulled off that easy. So there's no guessing game whether or not it's sealed or not when you're using a Tatler lid. Another thing, a reminder, is when you're using the Tatler lids, when you pull it out of the canner and you're gonna set it down to cool, you need to tighten the lid down as much as you can. This is going to push your lid down along with the gasket even tighter yet. To open up your jars that have Tatler lids, I've seen different openers out there specifically for like Tatler lids and actually all you need is a church key. Um, a jar bottle opener and you don't want to use the sharp end you're going to use the rounded end so all you have to do is stick it underneath you're going to catch underneath the gasket and gently lift it up and it'll come off so it's not that hard to remove and you don't need a special tool i think tatler says even using a spoon underneath it i've tried that it's just too hard for me so church key works well i have run these through the dishwasher and one thing I do want to mention about the gaskets, if they do start getting old, brittle, um, if there's any cracks, tears, anything like that in there, make sure that you discard them. Uh, Tatler does carry where you can buy just the gaskets themselves. Um, you can go to their website and do that. I do have extra ones just in case. Okay, the one thing about the gaskets Tatler recommends is if you do notice groove marks in there, those were against the lid because there's grooves in the lid here. And they say to flip it over the other direction so that the grooves are facing down. And the reasoning for this is they said so you don't cross thread. Now, I was having some issues, um, especially with the stainless steel bands, um, as far as putting these on easily. Now, it went on easy for me that time, but I have had to play with it a little bit. But that's why they say to check if you've got groove marks in your gaskets and to flip it over the other direction and keep rotating them that way so that you don't end up cross-threading and end up with failures. I would say 99% of failures are due to operator error. Been there, done that, mm-hmm, lots of times. Okay, another thing, we're talking about failures. Some people say they, they've had a lot of failures, and I've been trying to give suggestions of what may be the issue. Number one, your headspace. 
Other than the fact that you may have cranked down your band too tight and you're not letting all of the oxygen and air escape from your jar while it's processing, um, it's the headspace. Now, I've talked to several people and they have problems with meat. When they're trying to can meat or something that has a higher fat content in it, they've been having more failures than they do um, with other things they're processing. Say, for example, the beans they don't. My suggestion is to add one quarter inch headspace to it. Now, your meats, beans, um, not green beans, but like a legume, your dried beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans, that type of thing, that's considered a protein also. And it always says a one inch headspace that you need to leave. Add one more quarter inch of headspace and you should be okay as far as getting a good seal on your jar. The same thing when I've been doing my soups and stews that have meat and fat content in them. I make sure that I leave one and a quarter inch headspace. Normally I use quartz when I do those, but I'm just letting you know. That's another suggestion. Adding an additional quarter inch headspace will probably bring your success rate up as far as your jar sealing. And also when we're saying that the Tatler lids are reusable, they are reusable numerous, numerous times. It isn't like the metal lid where they say once you've used a canning, you must throw it away then, you can't reuse it. I do know some people that if it's in good shape, they use it for canning again. I will keep my lids, like this is a used one, and it is in good shape. I'm not going to use it for water bath canning or pressure canning. What I use it for is vacuum seal canning because a lot of my dry foods, I will vacuum seal into my jars and I do use the used canning lids on those. Okay, let's talk about our bands. Um, the bands that you get with your jars when you purchase them are a steel but they're tin plated and many of us know that we end up with an issue with them rusting especially on the insides and my thought is it possible that because of the friction we're screwing it down unscrewing it and continually doing that we open up a jar and we put it in the refrigerator we take it out we're unscrewing it again is it removing the tin plating in areas and that's why we're getting this rusting? I'm not quite sure, it's just a thought of mine. But uh, the stainless steel ones, I have purchased these on Amazon. I also have the wide mouth ones. These came from two different companies on Amazon. This one is considered a 304 grade stainless steel and this is a 316 grade stainless steel. This one's a little bit of a better quality stainless steel. The wide mouth bands, the company actually does say that they're rust proof. Now my husband and I were having a little bit of a debate of this and he's real scientific about things and he said no matter what, no matter what kind of stainless steel, it can be top of the line, guns, knives, whatever, if you leave them in the water long enough, you're going to start getting rusting. It's not 100% perfect. But this company does say that they're rust proof. So I believe that it would last longer. They say they're dishwasher safe. You can can with these because I have heard somebody asked me about it. They said, well, what good are these when you can't can with them? And I said, but you can. And a company they had come across made a comment. I don't know if it was just for sealing up dried foods or for decorative use, you know, arts and crafts, that type of thing. I don't know. But um, it, they had said it wasn't for canning, which I thought a little odd. But anyway, so these are a stronger steel. Could you hear that? More substantial. I decided to make the investment in these. They are more expensive. I bought three dozen of each size because I'm able to get up to 28, 29 jars into my large canner at one time. So I thought, all right, I'm doing the math. 
24 isn't going to cut it. I need more than 24 bands to go into my canner if I have it filled. So I did buy three dozen of each. Now I can keep using these over and over. I'm just going to store them in my little container here so I know that these are the stainless steel ones and I don't get them mixed up with my bags and bags of these and I've got them hanging from the rafters in the basement and everything else. And they hold up longer. I mean, I... I can't squeeze these down. Now, I don't want to wreck my band or whatever, but I would be able to smush it enough where it would not be perfectly round anymore and I wouldn't be able to use it on my jar. So I just wanted to do a little bit of a review of this. I have used both sizes already. Um, I showed in two different videos um, when I was using these and kind of giving a review. Um, nobody's sponsoring me to do this. I'm just, in, in fact, Tatler's not sponsoring me to talk about their lids either. I just believe in the product that much that um, I do purchase them all the time. I will continue purchasing them and I just wanted to share of how to properly use them. Okay, so these bands do have um, a 30-day money back guarantee um, and free shipping or whatever if you have Amazon Prime. And so I thought, all right, I'm gonna give these a try. Now, I thought possibly there was a learning curve to begin with, especially because I'm always, I'd say 99% of the time I use Tatlers. The other 1%, I may use metal lids just because they're in that case or I'm going to be gifting food away. So. I was having issues, especially with my Tatler lids, getting my rings on. And I'm saying, operator error. It isn't the rings, because at first it was like, I don't care for these. I'm sending them back. And my second time that I used them, I used the, um, the regular lids. I did like them. When I went to crank down on them after I took them out of my canner, they really snugged down nice, even. I had no issue whatsoever where the ones that come with the jars, I have had issues trying to turn those down. Um, also, one of the errors that I had the first time and I was doing the quartz, I may have had it cross-threaded. and. I tried to get, I had my hand under the one jar and I used a jar lifter and I was setting it into my canner and when I took my hand out from underneath it, all of a sudden the band, the lid, everything came up with the canning jar lifter and the jar spilled into my canner. I wasn't happy about that and I was just kind of judging these right away and I believe it was my error of how I had applied this onto the jar. So, I just want to say that, yes, right now, I do like the stainless steel ones. I've only used them a few times, but I do like these, and I feel these are going to last longer. They're going to keep their round shape, so I'm not going to have uh, an issue more with failures because of oblong or not sealing correctly. I don't know. Another thing I want to mention about the metal lids, um, I had heard from somebody that... China's manufacturing them and kind of coming across as their USA made or whatever, and they're extremely thin. I don't know if they can be any thinner than this, but they're not a very good quality. Another place to check if you're really looking for metal lids is check Lehman's. Um, they were out for a while, but they did say that they were getting more in. You can buy the lids from them in tubes in bulk and they have a really good price on those. So that's another place to look if you are in search of the metal lids. I wanna thank you for taking the time to just check this out, um, how to use a Tatler lid and what the difference is between that and a metal lid, and what my review and opinion, thought, whatever you wanna call it is on the stainless steel bands. They do cost a little bit. So this is another investment, but for the amount that I can, I feel it's worth it. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I really would like to hear from you. So until next time, I want you to have a wonderful day. God bless.